Before we get started with today's show, I just want to remind you that you can save 10% on your order with Symphony of Balloons, a luxury balloon company that also offers a 360 camera. Just simply mention you heard about them on Breaking Through Glass Ceilings. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of Breaking Through Glass Ceilings. I'm your host, Brian H. Waters. We're going to get right into it. You saw from the title of this show, Stephen A. Smith and Monica McNutt clash over the WNBA's coverage. Now, here's the thing. I was watching this, right? Let me, be, let me, let me give it to y'all straight. I'm sitting there, we're recording the Mass Man show for the Ringer, the Ringer Wrestling Show. And I'm watching it. And all of a sudden, I'm scrolling through Twitter. I'm always, when I'm producing a show, just to give y'all a little insight, when I'm producing a show, I'm always looking on social media for trending topics, just in case breaking news happens, right? So as I'm looking, I see this take place. I see the clips. And I was like, wow. Now, here's my perspective, because there's only so much we can say. I've always said this. When I worked at ESPN, I worked in the highlights department, and I also worked ABC News 1. To summarize it up, basically, ABC News, as you know, Disney is ESPN's parent company owned by ABC, all that. It's all under one umbrella. If there's a small station that's an ABC affiliate station in, you know, one of the 50 states or whatever, in one of the markets, we would send them footage. Now, anytime somebody wanted a WNBA game, a lot of the times we had to go through and hopefully find the game on the server. And sometimes the games were not even on the server. So I would have to do that and send it over. And that brings me to the point when Monica called out Stephen A and said, You could have done more with your platform. I felt that to the core. Now, I saw a little bit of the interview tonight. Um, She was on uh, Club Shay uh, Nightcap with Shannon Sharp and Chad Johnson or Chad Ochocinco. Uh, I don't know which one is his correct government. But she was on there and she says she knows Stephen A. Smith is the head honcho. If he wants to talk about it, they will. Everybody knows that. Now, when I was there, I worked with a good friend, Luis Sanchez. I met him there. When Luis and I, we met, I want to say this was my fourth day. We was working in sales quality control. And the first thing he learned about me, I was a huge wrestling fan. First thing I learned about him, he was a huge women's sports fan. Now, ESPN failed him because you would never have found any man that was as passionate about women's sports as Luis. That to the point he asked, could he work in the women's sports departments and whatnot? He wanted to work for ESPNW. They wouldn't let him. Now, what happened was there was all, we would always talk about the lack of coverage. I mentioned earlier that I would have to find the highlights or create the highlights myself because nobody would be assigned some of the WNBA games. And sometimes the WNBA games didn't even make the server. And as I was sitting here thinking about what I was going to say on this show, I went to look back to some years. And I remember around the Maya Moore dynasty of the Minnesota Lynx, right? There wasn't that much coverage. And this is what she was talking about. There wasn't that much coverage at all. I'm sitting there watching. I'm like, you know what? What if that, what if we would have gotten this? Because I'm a Sparks fan. So Candace Parker, my favorite. Those were some battles. I remember watching Candace Parker and Maya Moore go at it. And and I'm a casual fan, right? Not going to profess to know everything about the WNBA. I watched the Washington Mystics win a championship. They, it, was, it was like 
the Mystics, the Capitals, and the Nationals all within a time frame where they was winning championships. And those are fun times. I watched the playoffs. I know a couple of ladies, but I always had this issue with the lack of coverage. And one of the things that me and my good friend Luis would always say is, you can, ESPN could make us care about women's sports. They just choose not to. They would choose to talk about other things. Everybody can make the argument about, okay, well, this is what sells and all that. That's bull hockey. I'm sorry, it is. It's like my argument with baseball, right? When, like right now, the Yankees are doing well. Everybody wants to talk about Juan Soto. Well, guess what? Somebody had to make us care about them. You put the marketing behind that person. You put, it's it's sports one-on-one. And that's what they did with Caitlin Clark. Now, what I'm irritated is that there's always this discussion that everybody's jealous of her and everybody's upset. And when, so when a woman says it's not just her, they are telling the truth because she, there are other women in the WNBA. There are other stories. Shoot, New York Liberty. You know, watch them. Now, this is no disrespect to Caitlin Clark, but, you know, there was, there's other, you know, they've been, they have been talking about some of the other ladies, but it's been funny and easier for people who do not cover the sport to say that. Now, again, I don't cover the WNBA, right? I don't cover no sports except professional wrestling. But I have friends that do, and I'm fortunate enough to be able to watch their social media feeds, to be able to see what's going on. That's how I'm aware of some of the stories and who's who. You know, um, it was the same thing with women's soccer, right? The, when when the, they wanted us to care about the World Cup, despite the U.S. not having a shot to actually win the whole thing as far as the men, and then the women did, they made us care. And that's my issue with what Stephen A. Smith says. Okay, and, and you know, shout out to Tarika, uh, who was, y'all know she was on Breaking Through Glass Seals, um, in when in the um, first part of the show, the, you know, the standard edition. And you can listen to that, hear her story. Uh, she's been doing a phenomenal job covering sports, especially women's sports. Uh, she broadcasts a few WNBA games. Well, she broadcasts WNBA games and, you know, she has her podcast. Shout out to her. She's doing an incredible job. She went on a Twitter thread at She Knows Sports. And I'm not going to read out everything, but one of the things that I will highlight is that she mentioned Around the Horn was having these discussions had way more women who are analysts and talking about the WNBA game, right? She even says she has receipts. She could pull receipts. She would be wrong to pull receipts where she personally tried to get first take to talk about the WNBA last year. And, or how she was pulled into the office for calling the first take out for not talking about women's basketball in 2018. Now, I always look at, like I said, I'm looking at the time frame of champions, right? I don't have the, like, I can't recall. But this was the time of the Seattle storm, that era. And everybody knows, if you paid attention, that Breonna Stewart was on a tear, if you remember. You know what I mean? So they've had stars. It's just now... Okay, ESPN is like, all right, yeah, we think we'll market the women. And this always goes back to what I've been saying about women in broadcasting, women in sports, women's sports in general. This, they did not just start liking sports. They did not just start playing sports at a high level. Cheryl Miller, Reggie Miller's sister, if you watch his uh, 30 for 30, one of his documentaries, you would learn that he would say that he was never better than his sister. And everybody knows Reggie Miller's a Hall of Famer, and he still won't say he's better than his sister. And then when I look back at with, the, like I always said, you know, I've been blessed to cover sports with women, 
and I get some of the best coverage. You know, um, you know, when you know, just looking back at everything, and the thing that was very uncomfortable was when Stephen A. Smith had the nerve to go into uh, his show and name drop all the women that's been on first take. The reason why it was uncomfortable is because he made it seem and the interpretation that I personally got was that if it wasn't for him, I would not know who these ladies were. That is not accountability at all. And I thought that was quite frankly disrespectful. Like I said, women did not just start liking sports. Women did not just start playing sports. This has been going on for years. I remember, I believe it was the 97 All-Star game, the 96 All-Star game, when they made the announcement that the WNBA was coming. I was sitting on the floor at my Aunt Jean's house, and my cousin Sonia, shout out to her, we was watching the All-Star game. and. Yeah, it was, you know, Michael Jordan and them was playing. And, and it had to be 97, yeah, because it was the year after Jordan and Kemp. And I remember, and at that time, I didn't like Sean Kemp. And I remember they said, oh, yeah, coming, the introduction to the WNBA. And I remember being excited about it. I said, oh, wow, they got a WNBA? That's, that's going to be pretty cool. So forth, you know, me being a Lakers fan, that meant I was a Sparks fan. Became a Lisa Leslie fan. And then you see clips of, like, you know, just to kind of transition into the next portion of like the women was playing hard. And then there was a clip yesterday that showed like, you know, protection of your teammates and it showed like Candace Parker kind of getting, you know, bullied around and the teammates came and it said, this isn't nothing new. Caitlin Clark, everybody kept saying she wasn't going to come in and dominate the league. And what I did again, paying attention to the women and the men who cover the sport. They let me know straight ahead, like, she's not going to come in and just dominate this league. And why would she? She was a college player. You wouldn't expect any college athlete to come in and just dominate the NBA. Yeah, LeBron James was, you know, he made his presence known. He did his thing, same with KG, but he didn't come in and just dominate. Don't let nobody tell you that. So did I expect her to come in and dominate? No, but I also trusted the people who covered the sport, the experts. And I just wish there was more coverage around it. Um, because, again, you can make people care. There was a point in time where everybody cared what Yasiel Puig was doing. And now people are like, who's that? It was a baseball player who's a phenomenon in 2013. Because I remember when I started at ESPN, be doing the interview process, I had to look at how, like, like, look at a list of like, okay, look at the front page. What will be your top three stories, right? The same thing with the women's sports. You've always had some players who are marketable. You know, truth be told, people didn't want to really uh, talk about Maya Moore until, like, a lot of the social justice stuff started. Then, you know, she started getting a little bit more talk. But she was doing her thing. She was one, you know, and I would say, you know, there was Diana Taurasi. Like, these ladies have been killing it. And I just wish that they would get um, more coverage. And I said, and then stop the whole thing about, like I said, again, stop the whole thing about everybody being jealous of Caitlin Clark. You know, I, I don't think that's the case. And, and the more, and the thing is, I'm seeing more people who cover the sports saying that's not the case. But then the people who don't are trying to push this narrative. They're really trying to push this narrative. And a lot of people just aren't buying it. We're not buying it, you know? So, and then Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee, you know, said something that was just absolutely disgusting. You know what I mean? And, and I'm like, you know, he he had a nerve, like, you know, really just to, you know, say, I, I'm not going to repeat the words, you know. But I will say this. 
I've always said this. People have gotten very, they're starting to use the B word way too loosely. Did he mean it? He said he meant no harm by it. If he was talking about a guy and he said the S, that SOB, it would have came off differently. But it's one of those things. Would you say that about your mother? Would you say that about your sister? Or we say that, or better yet, do you believe you could say that about somebody else's mother or sister and not get slapped? Because it was just absolutely ridiculous. But he's apologized, but, you know, everybody got to be held accountable, you know? Everybody got to be held accountable, you know? And and, shout out to my sister, Ashley Baker, said, Tired of the WNBA drama, bring on the NFL. No, let the NFL rest. I want to see the WNBA drama, but I want to see the drama on the court. I want to see, cover the sport. Give me more segments. Put it in the A block. I want to see, at this point in time, after the NBA Finals, I want to see Major League Baseball and the WNBA in the A block. And, you know, I know the Olympics is coming, too. But that's what I want to see. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the matchups. Now, if Caitlin Clark is going to be the catalyst and Angel Reese, because, you know, I, I, I personally, I look at them as magic and bird, not just because one is black and one is white, but, you know, the the, the meetup in the champ, national championship game, everybody tends to forget that they, like, embraced afterwards. You know, that was all fun and sportsmanship. And then I look at it like, okay, if they're going to be the ones to help lead the push for more television time, by all means, let's get these ladies more TV time. Let's get them more coverage. So that's where I'm at. That'll be it, ladies and gentlemen. I may be back this week. Uh, the NBA Finals start this week. I'm pulling for the Dallas Mavericks. I'm a Lakers fan. You really think I want to see the Celtics take the lead for the most championships? No, <laughs> not at all. Give me, give me, give me the Los Angeles Lakers. Mm, it's still a top, I should say. But give me the Dallas Mavericks in six games. Kyrie Irving wins the championship. Luka Doncic. Wins the championship, MVP, Jason Kidd, win a title with the Mavericks, and then win a title as a head coach. But y'all know where to find me, at Brian H. Waters on all social media platforms. Make sure you support your local content creators, your favorite content creators. Um, You know, support me. Check out some of the sponsors and all of the links below. Until the next time, folks, do not let anyone place a ceiling above your success. So long, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, are you in the gym every week? Are you looking to kind of keep yourself cool while you work up a nasty sweat? Well, I got the best thing for you. Cooling bands bandanas, cooling towels, and so much more. Go to Vertical Athletics, get your favorite team in MLS or MLB, or guess what? Now they have a custom option so you can upload your own logo and you can save 10% at checkout when you enter the code Brian H. Waters. Go to verticalathletics.com, use the code Brian H. Waters to save 10% on some of your best cooling gear. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to support this podcast by wearing a t-shirt, whether it's the one that says breaking through glass ceilings or the one that says no ceilings above success, simply go to foryourwear.com. Also, you can support some of your other favorite podcasts and content creators, including those wrestling girls, Seahawk, and the wrestling club. And you can support some of your favorite independent wrestlers, including Jay Bougie, Trisha Dora, 
Chaz the Dawn. Shoot, all the pure ignorance is on there. So go on foryourwear.com, go under the personalities, you'll find Brian H. Waters and buy a t shirt. And remember, I'll give you a shout out on the show. Podcasters and gamers, we all know it can be intense. We're talking, we're getting hyped, we're passionate. Sometimes we need a boost. Well, you can get that by getting Rogue Energy. Rogue Energy is the number one supplement for podcasters and gamers. And they have tons of different flavors, including Strawberry Burst, Tropical Breeze, and Cotton Candy. And you can save 10% by putting in the code BRIANH at checkout. So go to RogueEnergy.com and enter the code BRIANH to save money. Are you a podcaster who is looking to share clips from your show in the simplest way possible? Well, I have the best solution, and that's Opus Clip. Opus Clip allows you to take the link to your show, upload it, and then they will clip off some of the best moments. And it allows you to edit it, change the captions, change the colors, and they also give you a viral score so you know which clip can potentially generate more buzz for your show so if you're looking to do that click the link in the bio sign up for opus clip and go viral with some of the best content from your show